And we're going to tell you a story of an experience. See, this isn't just theory. This is, this is experience. Pastor Joff, why don't you come and tell us what happened to you this year? So at the start of this year, I went to the doctors to get some tests done. And uh, the, the report came back that said I had cancer, which was pretty crazy. And like, what do you do with that, you know, when you, when you hear something like that from the doctors? So obviously that's a whole, a whole issue. But and the other issue for me was that we had our Asia, Malaysia, Manila conferences coming up. And this is like two weeks, week and a half, two weeks before we, I'm meant to get on a plane and go to Manila that I find out oh, being diagnosed with cancer. So there was, I come up against this, this wall, this blockage of, in the natural, things trying to stop me from doing what I feel called to do. I feel called and anointed of God to go to the world and lead people into breakthrough praise and worship. But the enemy tried everything he could to stop me from doing what I was meant to do, to stop me from running to my destiny. So I went to... Uh, I went to the doctors and the doctors, so this is like a week and a half before I went to get on a plane. The doctor said, look, because I said to him, I want to try and make, go on this trip. And he said, it's, you know, it's not going to happen. You're going to be bedridden for two weeks. Uh, even if you're flying first class, it wouldn't be comfortable. You're going to be in pain. So I had this negative, you know, this negative de declaration over my life. And, you know, I've been through ups and downs uh, on, on the journey with God. But I've never had something, I guess, this serious happen to me physically. And it's, it's in those moments where you've got to make a choice, you know. Do I actually believe what I'm singing about? Do I, do I believe the lyrics that I'm writing? And the answer is absolutely. Yes, I do. Yeah. No matter what comes my way, I will lift him up. Yeah. That, that's, that's the lyrics in the songs. You know, there's the song Only Way that we sung tonight. It was the first song we sung tonight. That was the song that I wrote a week before I even knew I had cancer. And the lyrics of that is, I'm holding on, I keep believing, no matter what, I keep on singing. And like all of those lyrics were just so true to where I was at. They were like my ammo for faith in praise, you know. And, and don't underestimate the power of a praise. And right. like that, it, it was that faith declaration that, that pushed me through that season. And so one doctor said two weeks, you know, it's not going to happen in his view. Um, but I, something in my gut just did not feel good about that. You know, and talking to Pastor Russell and Sam, and we're just like, no, we, this, we feel like I'm meant to be in Asia, you know. And so we, we said bye-bye to that doctor. <laughs> we found a new doctor. <laughs> and the new doctor said he was a lot nicer. And he said, look, if you can get a surgery, like, as soon as possible, I think we can put you on a plane. He said, you might still be in pain, have a little bit of discomfort because it's a major surgery to cut the tumour out, but I think we can do it. And so the, the timeline of this whole thing is, is what is miraculous. And, and God just paying attention to every single detail. And so just to put into perspective, this is like a week and a half before uh, I'm meant to go, or even less than a week and a half. So on Wednesday, I have that meeting with the first doctor who says it's not going to happen. Uh, and then, and then a powerful moment happened when I, when I heard that news. I thought, because I, I felt in a way a little bit defeated by that negative news. So I went down to the beach and just began to pour my heart out on God and just began to worship. And as I walked down the, the shores of that beach, I was just an absolute mess, just bawling my eyes out before the Lord and just really just releasing it and saying, God, I trust you. I trust you through this whole season through this whole circumstance no matter what happens lord i believe that you are god like the like the words of that song say doesn't matter what they say to me i believe in you doesn't matter what may come at me i believe in you so i kept that at the core of who i am and i had such a powerful encounter on that beach and i, and I praised god for like 15 or 20 minutes and then my phone rang and it was pastor russell on the, on the phone and he and he said i because he, he knew that I was, you know, saw that doctor and the doctor said two weeks. And he goes, I've got an idea. We've got this, another doctor that we can get in contact with who might be able to see you tomorrow. And from there, it just snowballed into this amazing just display of God's glory, really. It, you know, I, got, I was able to see that doctor the next day. And he's one of the head 
uh, one of the best surgeons in Melbourne, see him Thursday and then go the next day on Friday for a surgery. I mean, I think that's just crazy, the timeline of, of all that. Um, and, and, and I was able six days later to get on a plane, absolutely cancer free, and go over to Miller. My CT scans were clear, my blood tests were clear, my chest x-rays were clear, I don't need to give a nigga chemo, I'm completely cancer free. And God deserves all the glory and all the praise. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise, Jesus. We give you all the glory, Jesus. Thank you that lives were changed in Manila. The devil was defeated. And Jesus reigns on high. He has the victory over every situation. Thank you, Lord. And you know what? It didn't really matter to me I know this sounds crazy, but it wasn't so much that I had cancer and now I don't have cancer. The testimony for me that was through every single part of that journey, God was with me. And, and He gave me the strength that I needed and the hope that I needed and, me as a, and us as a family and spiritual family as well. Just uh, let me interrupt a little bit. On the Tuesday, you came in after the operation. So it's Friday and now it's Tuesday. He had to do some tracks for the tour and I come in at five o'clock and he's like I am so not feeling well Mm. and 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 we're in the middle of recording you and I never want to do that stop recording (laughs) (laughs) so I was doing this voiceover and he said I just got to go so we went home this is Tuesday right so Friday operation Tuesday we're gonna have to fly Thursday I go home and I think I don't know if he's gonna make it and Sam goes, nah, he'll be right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and yeah, so Tuesday I was feeling, you know, I'm not on my medication and everything, but I'm, I was feeling bad, like really, you know, really crook. Like I just wanted to vomit. And so I went home and rested. Woke up Wednesday, felt not too bad. Um, and then was still hobbling around because of the surgery. But Thursday, the day after that, uh, I was, I was good. Like, I was walking normally, walked straight into the airport. We f- flew to Manila. And as I sat on that plane, in that seat, really just reflecting over the last three or four weeks, it's just reminded of the goodness of our God. He is so good. He is so, 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 so good. And He made a way where there seems to be no way. That's the scripture that I've been hanging on to. In the natural, there wasn't a way that that was going to work out. But with God, He makes a way where there seems to be no way. Praise you, Jesus. And so I sat there, just overwhelmed in the presence of the Lord on the plane. And I just got my phone out and just heard these melodies in my head and started to write these powerful lyrics down, which is this new song. You're able to do it I know you can Cause God you are faithful To move again This mountain it seems big But I know you're with me So Jesus I'm grateful Until the very end And I had this encounter on the plane. These words came. I can hear your voice singing over me. I'm free indeed. Hallelujah. I can feel your power washing over me. And I'm free. And then this statement said, so God is on the throne Yes, He is He is in control Oh, in every season He's reigning over all hey. He is power Come on, whatever you're going through Would you lift up His name tonight? Sing it out Who oh, I lift Him
So what did Joth do? He went and hang with his father. And his father, <laughs> his father said, it's all right. I've got it. I've got a way. Gets a phone call. This surgeon, it's a miracle we got a surgeon in two days. Miracle. Absolute miracle. They had Doth booked into surgery on the Monday um, with the first person, which was a miracle in itself, but he would never have been able to get on that plane. But God knew Friday, bam. Then we got up over 28,000 people, led them into worship and praise and breakthrough. Now, Joth was still in the recovery, and you know, because he, he had an operation, his stomach had, uh, his muscles had, you know, had the operation connected to it. And so when he would sing, he'd feel this thing down here. So every time he was declaring to these thousands of people in Manila and then Malaysia, everything was sold out. Everything was sold out. We were recording our album at, in Manila and in Malaysia. <laughs> and God was releasing a sound from a vessel that he was doing a miracle in. See. I've discovered this with God, that we're all on a journey to get stronger, more powerful, more blessed. But there's times, there's vulnerabilities, there's storms. What do you do? Your flesh is crying out. dial into dad for a moment I just need to incline my ear to hear him that's what these 21 days of prayer and fasting is inclining our ear some of you just say I just want to come forward and worship who's stopping you not me I can hear your voice singing all I can hear
See, um, everybody has different stuff we have to work through. Everybody has. Joth had cancer he had to deal with. Never had that before. He didn't have a relationship issue. He thinks he's got a good relationship at home with his kids. There's no issues there. But out here came a challenge. Maybe your challenge is relational. Or maybe your challenge is financial. Or maybe your challenge is you feel depressed at times. Maybe your challenge is feeling alone. What do you do? Jesus revealed that to me. Dad, how should I think? How should I deal with this? What do you say about this? Oh, is that you singing again? <laughs> you're singing. Oh, you're singing over me. <laughs> Would you just lift your hands and listen to your dad for a moment? Might be a little thought like, I've got this, it's okay. Everything he's got is sorted. He's reigning over all. He's the King of Kings. He's the mighty God. He is power. Nothing's too big for our God. So I'm confident that I can come into your presence boldly. I'm confident that you who have started a good work will complete it. 
Father God, increase my capacity over these next 14 days. Increase my capacity. Father God, today, I ask for more compassion. God, increase my clarity. Increase my creativity. And help me be close to you. Holy Spirit, from the top of our heads to the tips of our toes, I release the favor and the blessing of God. I release these amazing people to operate under the grace you've given them. I thank you this year is going to be an amazing year, favored year. I thank you, Lord, in two weeks when I release vision, the vision for the year. Lord, with all the, all the students that are coming and all the people coming back, in the name of Jesus, we declare that well, this is the year we're going to be so close to you, closer than we've ever seen. Lord, last year, 10,000 people gave their life to Jesus here. But God, we're expecting more this year. God, we release your favor. We release your blessing. Lord, there's been supernatural increase. God, more Mustangs, more blessings.